All right, folks, here we are. We have a verdict. We have a verdict. Can you guys hear me okay? We have a verdict in the trial. Oh, crap, I don't have a screen to share. Uh, let me see. This is it. Here we go. The verdict read as follows. We find the defendant, Dean Cummings, not guilty of second degree murder. Is charged in count one of the grand jury indictment. Not guilty of second degree murder. Verdict number two. We find the defendant, Dean Cummings, not guilty of all. Not guilty. That's the crime of count one of the grand jury indictment. That's it. Acquitted. And, and Mr. Cummings, you've been found not guilty of these charges. Uh, you are exonerated of all conditions of, of, of the court. Um, what I want to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, and jury, is I need for you to follow my bailiff out this door, and, and I, I'll meet with you in courtroom C for a few minutes. Go out with her to call her that way, not through that one. Okay. All right, folks. Someone's crying in the courtroom. What a travesty of a trial. Absolute travesty of a trial. Let me see if I can uh, manage to invite any of the other crew. We planned to do this on uh, Nick's stream, but he was... Um, Concho, what I'll do in the next few minutes is I'll prepare a release order, but I'll have him go back because he may have belongings in the like. Let me see if Jeff is around. So... Uh, I'll just wait Let me with see if the, uh, Steve is available. Until I get that paper done, right? It will be in recess. All right. That was quick. I don't know if Steve's in a position he's in to join us or not. He was. Uh, uh, he's trying to get a flight back to Florida. Can't do it. He's instead flying into Denver. But that was awfully quick. Oh, Kurt. Let me send Kurt. Okay. Kurt, I'll DM you. Whoops. Whoops. All right, Kurt, you should have the uh, you should have the link in a Twitter DM. Now we can buy everybody a hairbrush. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, that is of course the obvious verdict that should have occurred on the legal merits of the case. No question about that. Here's Kurt. Hey, buddy. I'm not surprised in any way. I'm, I'm, no, of course I'm, not. It was the only just verdict. Anything close to anything just other verdict. would have been privacy. This case sucked. The yep. investigation sucked. The, pro the police sucked. The crim lab sucked. The investigators, they were all horrible. The prosecutions, they, they had no case. I can't believe this guy's been sitting in jail for two and a half years at this two point. Two and a half years of his life. First, first he had to survive a life-threatening attack, and then two and a half years of his life wasted wasted on this kind of nonsense. What a trap. There's something very wrong about that on a whole lot of levels. I, he's got to be asking himself, like, really? Really? This is what I spent two and a half years of jail for because of this? Really? Yep. It's uh, and nothing, nothing will be, nothing will be done to these prosecutors or any of the people who made these decisions to lock this guy in a jail for two and a half years and try him on murder charges where he would have gone to in, in a prison for the rest of his life without possibility of early release if he'd been convicted for, for nothing. They had nothing. They knew what crap their investigation was. I mean, you could tell from the prosecution's opening statement they were like junior high school students reading off of index cards. Uh, yeah, they, their yeah. heart wasn't in it. They didn't feel that they were pursuing justice here. They were purely going through the motions, and the motions were wading through a fucking septic tank. Yeah, I com I commented during closing argument that the whole experience, especially with like the bad audio, 
combined with the the video, it reminded me of watching a uh, a competition for like moot court, and uh, me because I've seen videos that are like that, and I'm like, these guys aren't going to make it to finals, right? <laughs> it's like, but it's real, which is so frustrating. Right. Yeah, did you see the uh, rebuttal by the prosecution? Uh, the one that went on forever on a path to nowhere and a securitist route to uh, stick up their ass. Yeah, I, I saw that. <laughs> Until the judge told her to shut up and sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they found it's like, well, I guess I'm out of time. Like oh you've been gosh. out of time for a little Ooh, while now. Biden at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but nothing, nothing will ever get me over the joy that was Skid Hour. Skid Hour was best hour. It was it was the greatest thing ever seen in the courtroom. I didn't know that these were options. I didn't know I could point a gun at a prosecutor, but apparently I can. And uh, yeah, these are these are things that if I become a criminal defense lawyer, these are things I'm going to, going to ask for at every trial. I'd like my client to point a gun right at you, please. Imagine if the gun actually had a chamber in it and he shot and killed that prosecutor. I would have had to say, well, it's just like the uh, Alec Baldwin case. He should have checked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now, yeah, now he's yeah. guilty. Now he is guilty of manslaughter. <laughs> well, he has he has a better posture than that, but still, yeah, I understand your point. Oh, good heavens! But what was with this skid hour? I was like, I have never seen anything like that. the 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 old The old school trope of the prosecutor trying to put the weapon in the guy's hand so that the the they, the the jury can imagine him with the weapon. It's but this was full on reenactment. I'm like, we're gonna get. Or get parts and drafts and like yeah, we're I've getting a casting seen, apparently. I've never seen this the reenactment being in a self defense no. case being initiated by the state. I've seen it done by the defense. In the George Zimmerman trial, it was very funny because the prosecution had brought in this large kind of blackish looking mannequin. They could put trajectory rods through it. It was life size to show the trajectory of the bullet through Trayvon Martin. But then later on in the trial, they opened up the door to exactly how the fight progressed. They had called the witness that was describing this beatdown. And on, on cross, the defense attorney, Mark Romero, actually asked the state, hey, you mind if I borrow your dummy? <laughs> and he put the dummy on the floor in the position of George Zimmerman and just started beating on it in the courtroom. And it was, it was extremely compelling demonstrative evidence using the state's own dummy. But of course, the defense chose to do that. And I guess the state prosecutors in that case never imagined something like that could happen or they would have objected. They were just too shocked, no, I guess, to say anything. I, I've but, never also I've also never heard the prosecutor just openly argue reasonable doubt before. Here's a whole bunch of things. There's so many possibilities. We don't know what happened. So many possibilities. Like what? What's happening now? It could have happened this way, or he could have been on hands and knees, or he could have been on top of the bunk, or this could have happened, or that could have happened, or the thing could have been mounted on the wall, or the rounds could have bounced anywhere. And the, what the, what's your uh, also, case also you don't know. My personal favorite might be of all of them. You don't know when these burn marks from the rifle were made. That <laughs> has to be my personal favorite one. That the, the burn marks from the rifle, you don't know when they are. They could be from hours before, days before, years before. So the you're telling me the evidence of the bullets, the thing that killed the guy, the burn marks are completely unconnected to the murder. That's right. your argument. That's a whole new level of special. The burn marks on the floor from the rifle are unconnected in time to the murder. Great. Just fantastic. And of course, we, we can never know what really happened, right? We weren't there either. But we can say all the evidence was utterly consistent with this guy's narrative of self-defense in a case where you have to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. If he framed it, well, he did it perfectly. And you get to get away with that. That's the way it is. The state has the burden of disproving your claim of self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. And there, and there simply was no evidence like that. And by the way, no, uh, no, no. one actually does that <laughs> no one actually no. sets no. up these fake self-defense cases no no one's that thoughtful so the whole thing was a pile of stupid i can't i i don't know what redress if any is available in new mexico for this at this point for this guy because I, I i i'm trying to put myself on the on the spec on the scale of like from a scale of zero to a hundred where and beyond a reasonable doubt is somewhere above 95 percent like yep. what threshold do I think the state made? And I'm like, uh, it's below five percent. 
the problem I'm 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 having some problems with the probable cause standard right about now. It's not looking great. Yeah, I talked about this earlier today. We don't have a probable cause standard in the US. We not a real one. I mean, yeah. probable cause to my mind, what it should mean is in the name. Probable, more probable than not that this person committed the crime before you can drag him into a murder trial where there's a random 10% chance he gets convicted no matter how innocent he is. But we don't have anything like that. If, if the if the prosecution can tell the court a story in which the court's required to view the evidence in the light most favorable to the state, it could even 1% be a possibility of guilt. That's enough probable cause in today's yeah, that's United not, That's not enough. That's not enough for me. I, I've, I've heard probable cause more around 25, 30%, but yeah, it's 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 in not that either. And especially in a self-defense case, a fatal self-defense case where you have the defendant saying, yeah, I shot him. Uh, you know, if the probable cause threshold is low enough, that guy's going to trial every time if the prosecutor wants Fair. him to. Fair. So, yeah, I'm not surprised the jury came back so fast and maybe the prosecution will rethink their life. I don't know if they were on the ballot like today. But if they were, maybe they'll be unseated. Maybe there will be justice in this world yet. Uh, I doubt it. That part of New Mexico, the Taos, Los Alamos area, it's pretty blue. I mean, New Mexico generally is pretty blue. I mean, there's people who live out in the boonies that are that are conservative and pro-Second Amendment and all that stuff, but there's like eight of them. Yeah. Where the population is, it's, uh, yeah, Taos, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, Los Alamos, Pretty darn blue. So I doubt anything will happen to anybody. I mean, if this were, uh, maybe, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I guess I can replay it, right? I, it happened so quick. Let me see. Let me see. How would I, how would I end up back in? Oh, it was so quick. Might as well be, you know. Right? Sweet to the point. This judge is ready to go home. I don't blame him. All right. It, it's hard to catch just the last few seconds of, of like an all day stream because this is the same stream from this morning, folks. Uh, yeah. But let me see if uh, the judge should be coming on momentarily. And it's a little awkward because I'm on my laptop at home, obviously, and I don't have my usual multiple screen set up. Let's see. Okay. There you go. I understand it. I'm, 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 oh, my God. I understand the jury has reached a verdict. Um, first of all, I need to know who the fourth person is. You can state the Guys, there's no volume. And uh, did the jury, in fact, reach a verdict? Can you hand the verdict form to my bailiff? There we go. Hand the verdict forms to the bailiff. I think the volume issue is here first. Right. Here we go. The verdict read as follows. We find the defendant, Dean Cummings, not guilty of second degree murder, is charged in count one of the grand jury indictment. Verdict number two. We find the defendant, Dean Cummings, not guilty of voluntary manslaughter, a lesser crime of count one of the grand jury indictment. And, and Mr. Cummings, you've been found not guilty of these charges. Uh, you are exonerated of all conditions of, of, of the court. Uh, what I want to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, is I need Look for you the to judges. follow it's my like, bailiff out All right, we're done here. We're done. Four sentences. And, and I, I'll meet with you in courtroom C for a few minutes. Go easy peasy, baby. Give me all her that. Not to do that. Okay. Mr. Cummings, here's your rifle back. I'd like to hand this to you personally. Maybe that's the widow, I guess. If I had to guess, I mean, who else could it be, right? Thank God they don't do spark of life evidence here. Oh, Lord. Spark of life evidence is so bullshit.
Come the mask was not the judge. The is out to prepare a release order, but I'll have him go back because he may have belongings in the like at the, at the county jail. Okay. Nice. So, uh, I'll ju just wait with him here in the in, in, in the courtroom until I get that paper done. All right. Okay. We'll be in recess. All right. That's nice. Sometimes they actually make you go back to jail and get processed out. Believe it or not. Well, it sounded like what he was going to do. It sounded like it because he said that I'm going to send back. Sometimes it takes right. a couple days, Kurt. Oh, okay. I didn't know that part. Yeah, you go back to jail for a couple of days even though you've been acquitted. So he's keeping him in the courtroom and he's sending a he's sending a bailiff or a sheriff or a deputy after. Like I didn't said. know it was a couple of days. I thought it was like a couple hours max. No, it's horrible. <laughs> Imagine that you get acquitted and you got to go back in that cage for a couple more days. Yeah. So this is good. They're immediately going to get his stuff and kick him loose. Obviously, the judge didn't think for a second this guy was guilty of anything. Or, or he wouldn't have been so peremptory in all this. He would have made more theater out of it. But uh, great, yeah. great. Yeah, just read the two sentences. One sentence per verdict. S sir, this court, you no longer have business with this court. <laughs> the, the only thing he should have done is hand him his rifle back. Yeah, right. No joke, right? That, why not, right? He didn't why commit not? any crime. He did nothing wrong. Why shouldn't he have you it? You know they're going to hold on to it and demand he file 8,000 papers to get it back. Maybe. I mean, Zimmerman got his back. Eventually, it's, sure. I mean, I, I remember I was interviewed on uh, in uh, some German television news station that had a, 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 what do you call it, a branch. There's a name for it. A, bureau? a branch. A bureau. A bureau in Washington, D.C. Flew me down to Washington, D.C. to do an interview, a lengthy interview about the Zimmerman verdict. And one of the things they were most shocked about, this, besides him being acquitted, which was not hard to explain, was that he got his gun back. They couldn't believe he got his gun back. And I was like, well, why wouldn't he get his gun back? He, he didn't do anything wrong. But of course, in Germany, you don't simply get a pistol handed to you. <laughs> the gun. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm very very happy that justice was done today, and that the uh, the the citizens that comprise the jury of New Mexico are fortunately not as stupid, careless, and sloppy as apparently their sworn law enforcement and sworn prosecutors are. Yeah, you know, it really was terrible. I mean, even in the Rittenhouse prosecution, that was a travesty of justice. But at least Binger was technically proficient. He wasn't a bad lawyer. He knew what levers. I really liked his opening. I thought his opening was great. I remember giving it very high marks. I think I gave it like nine or nine and a half out of ten. I thought it was a great opening. Oh, the sorry. house is closing. Thought, left a lot sorry. to be desired. I thought, I I thought Nick was, was texting me, but it was me that my phone is recording my own voice. Excellent. So it's like, oh, he's saying exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought Binger was technically proficient as, as bad a person as I think he is, but these prosecutors were just bad. They were bad. Yeah, they, were. Uh, they they were they were it didn't really show on direct, but the moment the state uh the 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 defense started and they called uh, the defendant as their first witness and they had him on cross, Miss Blueberry, uh besides just the whole gun thing and the reenactment thing, she just was not good. She was no. not Good lawyer. Apparently, if you ask the same questions that the defense asked, but you ask them incredulously, that comprises cross-examination. Right. That, that's exactly what she did. That was her entire approach. Just go, yeah. oh, yeah. And then they He's open not... the door on things. You got you to gotta love questions when you're cross-examining the defense's witness and be like, so he's never used mace before. No, he has. He maced my dog. I have it on tape. Lol. And their other technique was to ask a bunch of non-important questions where you knew the guy was going to say, well, I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, so what color were your socks? I don't know. And then on closing, you could say 34 times he said, I don't know. About anything that mattered? <laughs> About any of the elements of a claim of self-defense? No. Yeah. What a waste. All that money, two and a half years of this guy's life, Imagine what that would be like, two and a half. And I don't think the guy's got a wife or anything. I think he's completely estranged from his family. But that means there's no one to take care of your shit. No one's paying your mortgage or car bills or anything. Well, if he puts <laughs> I mean, up a GoFundMe, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a couple hundred bucks because I think he deserves it. I wonder what kind of magazine articles Outdoor Magazine is going to do about him now that he's been acquitted. Probably nothing. Yeah.
I, I no. guess he's probably less interested in land in New Mexico at this point if I were a betting man. Well, I got to say, man, if, if anyone were going to commit a serious felony anywhere and they're concerned about getting prosecuted for it, these would be the prosecutors you'd want. This is a fair point. I mean, that, you know, that is a that is a reasonable point. You know, if you're going to commit crimes, apparently do them in New Mexico because the prosecutors have no clue what's going on. Well observed. The, the lead investigators in a coma for nine days. But it, that's not his fault, right? But before the coma, he's testifying to the grand jury that he expects the forensics results to support their belief that this was a murder for, for tests he never asked for and that they never did. They were never yeah, going to have a problem. That's a bit of a problem. I anticipate the test saying X when you haven't ordered the test and apparently never will. I mean, what was that Tom Cruise movie, Minority Report, right? Future crime. It's like future crime, right? Based on the results we don't have, we believe this is a murder. So please return an indictment so we can lock this guy in a jail for two and a half years. Well, the prosecution is basically just doing that throughout the entire trial based on facts in some alternate world where I just create them. Then he's totally guilty. He could be. If we imagine the facts are as I want them to be, he's guilty. Right. 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 In this hypothetical yeah, yeah. set of circumstances where everything goes our way, there's no proof of any of this, you know, but it's possible to imagine a set of circumstances in which this was not self-defense, as he claims. That's great. I also liked when we were the defense was doing their closing as like, oh, they said he never identified himself. But if we went to the tape, they never asked for his name. Right. <laughs> like, How bad do you have to be as a cop to not ask the guy's name? That's bad. It's like he never said he was distraught. It was literally the first words out of his mouth. Okay, great. Uh, which makes me, and I, I, the defense's point is well taken, makes me happy that we have some sort of recording mechanisms now and is yet more testament to body cameras and so forth because how many people have gone to jail because of how many cops like, who I have uh, perhaps misremembered or perhaps uh, more than that guilty. on the to stand. The to the chat, not guilty. I should put a banner up. Yeah, not guilty. Not guilty all the way through. He's a free man. Go to Nevada. Maybe they'll treat you better. Yeah. Work. Okay. Let's see. Whoops. Oh, folks, I'm so bad at this kind of thing. Okay, let me try it again. Yeah, and the funny thing is most of the cops' body cameras didn't work. Yeah. And the one recording that did work, the one out of all of them, the one that did work was exculpatory for the defendant. Yeah. Every time the prosecution, every time the prosecution opened its mouth, this entire trial, it just got better for the defense. Every single time. Which is what happens when you have a shit case, right? And keep in mind, folks, there could have been theoretically, there could have been evidence contrary to self-defense. The victim could have been shot in the back from a distance. Uh, there could have been some contact shot to the top of the dome that was looked like an execution shot. Uh, all kinds of things could have been weird. There could have been prior animosity between the two men. Uh, a threat to kill him if I ever see you again here. I mean, all kinds of stuff could have been in evidence, but of course, not none of it was. Yeah. So it's not like it's impossible to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt in these kinds of cases, but, but you need the evidence to do it. That helps. Evidence is helpful. I mean, what can you really say except this was a complete clown show and a waste of everyone's time? So when Binger, me... when Binger is looking competent, you know things have gone poorly. All right, let me see. I set these streams up at the very last second, so let me take a look and see if we have any uh, comments or questions or chats worth sharing here. I'm not sure what this went out to. I had expected to do this on Nick's channel, but he was out voting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so First to Law Self-Defense Membership site. We have 
Uh, Allison writes, not guilty. And all I have to say is shame on law enforcement and the prosecutors. Yep. Scott says, what about lying to the grand jury? That would be the lead investigator who is promising all kinds of uh, forensics results, tests that were never done. Jim, Kyle's law needs to be shoved down their corrupt throats. So there is one state, the state of uh, Washington, where when you have a self-defense case, the defense can request an additional jury instruction and jury form for the jury. And it only applies if the jury acquits on the basis of self-defense. But if they do, the jury can then be asked, do you believe that the state failed to disprove self-defense by even a preponderance of the evidence? And if they sign that, yes, we think the, fail to prove, the state failed to disprove even by a preponderance, the defendants reimbursed for his legal expenses and other costs as a result of the prosecution from the state. Um, I had proposed the Kyle's Law on a similar model, except that it would the liability would be split between the state and the prosecutors personally. So they personally had some skin in the game because if it's just coming out of the state treasury, what does the prosecutor really care? Uh, Allison writes, two and a half years in jail. His business is gone. The no notoriety he earned as an extreme skier is gone. Dean Cummins will be lucky to afford a place to live. It's inexcusable. How can we help make Kyle's law happen? Listen, folks, I, I came up with it as a concept, but I'm not a legislator, or, or, nor am I a lobbyist. So it's on my website. Go ahead and grab it. Share it with whoever your legislator you could is. Be. You could be. L lesser men have done more. I believe in you, Andrew. I'm, 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 I'm busy here earning a living. Um, a LOL cat writes, having been in near an unloaded tied... Uh, Oh, having been near an unloaded gun at a gun show that went off, that whole exchange gave me panic flashbacks. Yes, I've seen unintentional discharges, and it's fucking scary. The loudest sound in the world is the gun, the unloaded gun that suddenly makes a loud noise, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Jim writes, Allison, Kyle's Law is Andrew's creation. My personal curative would be that anytime prosecutor Elio has abridged or attempted to abridge defendant's guaranteed rights, they should be subject to serve the sentence the defendant could have been subjected to. That's a pretty severe penalty. Uh, I would agree with that penalty for, for example, a law enforcement officer who plants evidence. Uh, if they do that and you can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, I would sentence that officer to whatever the crime would have been had uh, the evidence not been planted. So if he's trying to frame someone for murder, the sentence for the officer who planted the evidence should be a murder sentence or drug possession sentence or whatever would be applicable under the circumstances. Uh, let's see. How long did they deliberate? Uh, I, I'm not sure when I got off with Nick. I think it was maybe 1 o'clock my time, 1 o'clock Mountain Time. So that was uh, four and a half hours ago. Yeah, so the jury would have had lunch. There was no lunch break before they broke. So they would have had lunch. That's an hour. And, uh, and then they spent three hours deliberating, notify the court. They have a verdict. The court pulls everybody in. So... Maybe two or three hours at the most, I would think. Makes you wonder what it took, why it took that long. It does make you wonder. Uh, let me take a look now at, at my own law of self to see if, it, see if it actually streamed on my own YouTube channel here. I hope so. I hope so. It was. Um, I must have, because that's where I found you, right? That's who you are. That's who you are, right? I <laughs> know. I'm so bad at this stuff. Okay, yeah. let me see. Send a comment. Saying, so send me a link. And then, yeah. Uh, let's see. Supers. See all. Uh, a $3 super chat from Spitfire. Thank you very much. Sorry, I don't have my ka side uh, sound effect at home. Just has, a, it looks like a little animated kazoo or something. A uh, project's done poorly, $10. Here's to justice and a based jury. Just soon, $10. The loudest sound in the world is a click when you expect a bang or a bang when you expect a click. Yep. Sure enough. All right. Well, Kurt, I don't know that I have any more to say really about the case at this point. Oh, oh a LOL cat said they made sure they got the 5 p.m. so they got paid for the full day. There you go. I don't know, the whole $6 or $10? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's I'd... fine. No, I'm going to pop over with um, with uh, Joe on his channel, and we're going to do yeah. election results for a while. So I'm going to make myself a margarita uh, in right. honor of New Mexico. 
and then I'm going to pop over there. So we'll see you for the election coverage. Could be fun. So yeah, for I'm those of you who like that such thing, uh, good logic, champ, tonight. All right. All right. Take care, Kurt. Thanks for dropping in. I really appreciate it. All right, all right folks. I'm going to sign off, too. There's really nothing more to say that we haven't said already. Uh, thank all of you for uh, following along with us over the past uh, week. It's been great fun. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks for all of you who became Law of Self-Defense members. Bought the book. Become a Law of Self-Defense member at lawofselfdefense.com slash join. Become a platinum member at lawofselfdefense.com slash. Well, if you, get, if you do lawofselfdefense.com slash Nick, you can be a platinum member for 50% off today only. Otherwise, uh, tomorrow, it'll once again be lawofselfdefense.com slash platinum at the normal platinum price. Get a free copy of our book, The Law of Self-Defense Principles at lawofselfdefense.com slash free book. And other than that, folks, I think I will um, maybe see all of you tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, definitely on Thursday. So acquittal, acquittal for Dean Cummings, both murder two and voluntary manslaughter. The only two remaining charges, the a tampering charge and the failure to identify charge had been dropped following the, the state's case in chief. Wow, Brock with a hundred dollar super chat. Holy cow! I really wish I had my king, my kaching uh, sound effect for that. Thank you very much, Brock. That's enormously appreciated, and uh, that'll help me pay for that bottle of whiskey I just bought. Nick <laughs> cost me almost a hundred bucks to mail it to him. Oh my gosh! All right, folks. Thank you all so much. Have a great election night. Let's hope the election goes the right way. Uh, for those of you on the other end of the political spectrum, looks like it sucks to be you tonight, uh, but we've all been there at one time or another. Have great fun. Don't drink and drive. See you all very soon. Remember, if you carry a gun so you are hard to kill, that's why I carry a gun, so I'm hard to kill, so my family is hard to kill, then you also owe it to yourself and your family to make sure you know the law so you're hard to convict. Until next time, I remain attorney Andrew Branca for Law of Self-Defense. Stay safe.